I got a sample pack of some of the microinverters I was interested in. This one is the HMS 500 1 TNA. Uh, this is a microinverter for a single solar panel. I also wanted to see this guy right here. So single microinverter, and this is a four. You got four inputs uh, for different solar panels. Oh, that's that's really cool. So it's about the size of two inverters. It has the bracket on there for um, mounting it to the rail. It's getting it up on the rail. Okay, so we have um, a pre-made uh, connector for the cable. That's a Wi-Fi antenna. All right, there's a few different parts um, for these um, inverters. That's called a DTU um, that monitors uh, the system. We have a few tools and then we have the cable. Interested to see how it goes together. Let's see, snip these apart. So it looks like they come in singles, just a single connector. And then you can see in there it's like you could plug another one into. That's cool. Okay. All right, so this has already been stripped back. Those connections look like they've even been dipped. Um, so line one, line two, ground, no neutral. It's a thick cable. Um, okay. This one right here. Let's pop that open. Oh, that's the way to do it. Oh, cool. It's a tube and then you have screws. You just slide these in here, match up the, the colors into those ports. That's cool. Go around. Black, red, green. Put it in there. directional so they have the two tools but then i also have a couple pieces of hardware this um a lot of times we call it a burner but if you want it if you needed an extension on your cable to jump up a road to go to a panel that's further away you could install one and then plug it and then also if it's an end one it looks like you just loosen this Let's try it out. Torque that down, then that's watertight. That's cool. That's interesting how it's modular, how it just comes in sections of the cable that you can wire up to each port. You can do termination, whatever you want. One thing is it's kind of it's kind of big and bulky. It's not necessarily going to fit in a channel rail, and I don't think you would want to. Because if water's building up in here, I don't think you would want to submerge this, although it's water rated, if you didn't get that tightened down enough or anything like that. So I got some big uh, cable ties and I'm going to test out kind of a way to do wire management with uh, these guys. And then kind of pull it snug. And then... A couple really big heavy duty cable ties um, right around this connector um, and then maybe a smaller one here and then if you have a channel rail a lot of people like to put their wires in the rail but it's not too hard to get that all tucked up um, but you do have a lot of slack so and then this could go to a junction box So depending on your panel frame thickness, mount them upside down like this. It may be, it may be too tall for when the panel goes over top of it and it may hit. Um, so these brackets are long enough um, that you can uh, reach uh, T-bolts. Clip it like something like that.
that's my final decision. It works a lot better that way. So I've just used some heavy duty cable ties to get this connector to the rail and then a couple more um, and then go into the channel rail there. I'm gonna grab this solar panel and show you how these get plugged in. Oh, so it's labeled one, two, three, four. So this is panel three. So then I could plug in this panel here you know, run, do some wire management with that as well. Disconnect this. It, it might be nice to have like a washer or a bigger bracket for mounting these to the rail because they're pretty heavy um, and you might need to drop them down a little bit. Uh, it looks like you got a grounding screw if you wanted to actually ground uh, the microinverters. The, the rail should be uh, sufficient. Um, but I'll check with manufacturer specs. I wanted to unbox the DTU rail. Data transfer unit. with an install map so so you can i assume yeah peel that sticker off place it on here kind of map out which panel gets plugged into which port then you can just write the customer's name take a photo of it and you never lose it a lot of times it's the little things that uh, matter i don't have to print something else off or make some notes on on some piece of metal or <laughs> cardboard or something that's this is the dtu Looks like we got uh, 2.4G and 1G. Looks like you got an ethernet port, USB port, an RS-485 port, SD port, um, a DMR, not sure what that is, and a USB and a reset. All right, I got loads of questions here. So far, this is interesting. There's a few unique features to this product that I like. Um, the high output, um, the different models, um, the modular trunk cable, uh, the Wi-Fi. I'm interested to see if you have to have a DTU installed in order to set the grid profile and software update and all that and just how user friendly it is, especially for the uh, DIY community. Could you just get these products, plug them into solar panels, and then you know essentially have a system that's turned on? Or is there a long commissioning process that a certified installer needs to be on site to go through in order to get the system turned on and set up correctly? I like the output on this product. Um, with some of the new solar panels that we're getting that are just bigger and bigger, it's kind of getting ridiculous. And a solar panel might be be you know 400 to 500 um, watts um, DC on their STC rating so if they're putting out like 80% of that you could be very easily 380 to 400 um, watt AC output from the inverter so there would be no clipping if this is you know oversized um, 